السلام عليكم ورحمة الله التغير المناخي والاحتباس الحراري جرساء دار باتا يقرعان باستمرار وبإلحاح في الأونة الأخيرة ويثيران الكثير من التساؤلات ويستدعيان تحركا سريعا وخططا لمواجهة العواقب مع الخبيرة في التغير المناخي والحقل البيئي زارينا أحمد من الداخل معكم زينب صفار تابعوا قمم قمم وتبدأ الجلسة لا ولن ولم وحدقوا وحللوا وأجلوا ومحصوا صدق مظفر النواب بتوصيفه حال القمم اليوم ولا سيما عندما يتعلق الأمر بالمناخ والبيئة السؤال اليوم هل شهدنا في الأونة الأخيرة أي تقدم فيما يتعلق بالتغير المناخي وارتفاع حرارة كوكب الأرض والتداعيات الخطيرة لذلك؟ في عام 1992 التقت الحكومات في ريو دي جانيرو وأبرمت إطار اتفاقية الأمم المتحدة حول التغير المناخي والتي تلزم الدول الموقعة بأخذ التدابير لتلافي التداعيات الجسيمة بيد أنها لم تشر إلى أي نوع من التدابير اللغط الذي دار حول الخطوات الإجرائية دفع إلى ما عرف ببروتوكول الكيوتو في عام 1997 والذي استلزم تقليص الانبعاثات العالمية 5% مقارنة بالمستويات في 1990 وهي معاهدة دولية واضحة لا تحتمل التأويل صيغت بحرفية وكانت ستكون ملزمة قانونيا تماما نائب الرئيس الأمريكي السابق الجور وقع البروتوكول ولكن كان جليا أن الكونغرس الأمريكي لن يصادق عليها أبدا فقانونيا لن تنفذ الاتفاقية حتى تصادق عليها الدول التي تمثل 55% من الانبعاثات العالمية وبما أن أمريكا هي الدولة الأولى في تلك الانبعاثات لم تمرر الاتفاقية وبقيت معلقة عقدا من الزمن غير أن روسيا قررت في أواخر 2004 كسر هذا الجمود في الملف المناخي ومشت بمسار أدى إلى تنفيذ بروتوكول الكيوتو واستتبع ذلك باتفاق جديد أبرم في بالي عام 2007 من شأنه أن يحل محل بروتوكول الكيوتو لكن الحصول على تواقيع 196 دولة ليس بالأمر السهل فاستكملت الدراما في مؤتمر كوبنهاجن عام 2009 ويرى المراقبون أن قمة المناخ في باريس 2015 أيضا بائدة بعد تقارير أشارت إلى ارتفاع مفاجئ وشديد في درجات الحرارة العالمية في فبراير الماضي والتي وصفها علماء المناخ بأنها قنبلة صادمة وسريعة زارين أحمد مرشدة التغير المناخي والبيئي في مجلس الأقليات الإثنية ومنظمات القطاع التطوعي في سكوتلندا والتي أشرفت على أكثر من خمسين مشروعا متعلقا بالمناخ على المستويين العالمي والمحلي تشرح المعاني والأسباب والمخاطر للتغيير المناخي العالمي ومدى الوعي لتلك المسببات وما ينتج منها Zarina Ahmad, Climate Change and Environment Officer with the Council of Ethnic Minority Voluntary Sector Organizations, the CEMVO. Welcome to Minad Dakhla from the inside, ma'am. Thank you, Zeno. You're really most nice welcome. to be here. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure to have you. Well, now that climate change and global warming have become both a major public issue, what's climate change and what is global warming and how are they related? Climate change is the effect of having carbon emissions mm -hmm. um, going into the atmosphere. And what happens when they go into the atmosphere is that the sun's rays that come and heat up our planet then aren't able to be emitted back out. It's like a greenhouse effect, mm -hmm. right? So the sun's rays hit the, the planet, but because we have all this carbon dioxide and carbon, not just carbon dioxide, but there are other greenhouse Methane, gases. Yes. There are other greenhouse gases, but carbon dioxide is the main one. Mm -hmm. So these gases then form a blanket around the world. Mm -hmm. And when this blanket is formed, the sun's rays are, are unable to penetrate back out, and they've come back and hit the Earth again, warming it up, and that causes global warming. Why? Uh, 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 we tend to hear lots of people now discussing the issue of climate change and uh, there was recently also a summit in Paris 
the climate uh, summit, uh, it seems that they are ringing something. The issue of climate change is now exasperating. Mm -hmm. um, more and Why? More, more and more countries are becoming, they are feeling the effects of climate change and are not suffering from the impacts of climate change. Okay. Right. So because... Well, what do you mean by suffering? How? Suffering. Okay. So the, uh, the consequences of climate change can be things like flooding. So you see in places like recently in Pakistan, mm -hmm. um, in Kashmir, the areas got flooded really bad and Sawat got flooded really badly, where we lost millions of lives. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's a result, a direct result of climate change because the area where they're situated are on the foot of the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. So the ice, ca ice caps of the Himalayas are melting and these are causing vast floodings to certain areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have that area. In other areas you've seen um, fires, forest fires. So Australia is suffering really badly from forest fires. Mm -hmm. And again, that's because the seasons are changing, the temperatures are soaring in some places. And then there are other places that you see that have never had snow over the years, are getting snow. So every year for the last five years, where weather is concerned, we're breaking records. It's been the hottest year in, in one country. It might be the, the highest snowfall in another country, the highest rainfall in another country. So year on year now, recently, we are hitting, we are breaking records when it comes to weather pattern changes. Mm -hmm. And weather pattern changes are really global warming as well. Who is responsible for that, Zarina? Is it us? or our governments or certain kind of industries or who? Who is to be uh, responsible directly for this? This is a question that we discuss day in and day out. Right? Mm -hmm. So yes, there are three different sectors that you could put, point the fingers at. Point the fingers at governments. Governments need to do more. They have targets to reach. How do they reach those targets? So that's the question. And that's what the UN summit was all about. In Paris. Mm -hmm. Then you've got what corp corporations and industry do, the users of electricity and energy and the biggest emitters of mm -hmm. carbon emission. Mm -hmm. And then you've got us and our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now if we weren't consumers, corporations wouldn't need us, industry wouldn't need us. So we have to look at ourselves and what we do. And then even as Muslims, we have a responsibility to protect the earth and the environment. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes forget that and we exploit it. Mm -hmm. How can we protect it? I mean, maybe we are doing things that we are not aware that this is not good for the climate. One of the things that we ha do have to look at is, is energy. Mm -hmm. right? Where do we get our energy? I mean, that's the thing that us as human beings have developed over the years is our use of energy, our use of resources. So indu industrialization is probably one of the biggest contributors to climate change. Mm -hmm. So it's our demand on, on the resources, whether it be energy, whether it be the products that we use. If we're cutting down the trees, the trees absorb the, co the carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide. Yes. So if we're, cut, if we're removing the thing that actually absorbs the carbon dioxide, so We're just exasperating the, the situation. Yes. Right. And increasing and the amount of increasing. carbon dioxide. So that, that's at, at the first level. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the whole processing system, and that is very intensive and it uses up a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And again, energy is like electricity. Where does our electricity come from? You know, where does um, our gas come from? It all comes from the earth. and. So fossil fuels are running out, mm -hmm. and that's the biggest issue. And I think fossil fuels, the running out of fossil fuels, is probably why it's hit on more of a, a bigger UN agenda, mm -hmm. because we have to really address where, where, where how is this is going to be sustained? How are we going to be sustained if we run out of fossil fuels? Mm -hmm. So it's the need to then look at an alternative. Zarina, you were selected as one of 400 from around the world to participate in Al Gore's, uh, who is the ex-Vice President uh, of America, Global Climate Reality Leadership Program. And also you were selected as one of the 24 for Scotland's first food leadership program. And you have been responsible for over 50 projects tackling climate change on a local and national level. When did you start to get that interested? and inclined to know more about the issue of climate change and global warming, and why? 
and why. Um, the why is very important. The why is very important, right. Okay, the why is from when I was very young. Mm -hmm. I would say it was from when, as soon as I was able to start thinking and having a conscious mind. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, I have always been a vegetarian and I always believed that every living thing had a soul, including the earth. I feel as if the earth breathes mm -hmm. and I feel it. So it was always for me, I was very conscious about what we did to the planet, what we did to the, um, the habitats of the, of the planet. And I was always realised that us human beings were a very minute part of a bigger ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And from what I could see as I grew up um, was that we were responsible for so many catastrophes. However, that wasn't the career I followed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it was only probably about eight to nine years ago I was looking at a career change, I would say I had a midlife assessment mm -hmm. and I was looking to see what career I should follow um, and I think that was when I decided that I had two passions, one was psychology which is what I did my degree in mm -hmm. and one was environmental issues. So I weighed them up and environmental issues won mm -hmm. and that was the path I started to follow and and I actually love every minute of the work I do. And how do you see, where is the world heading to concerning the issue of the environment? I don't think we're doing enough quick soon enough. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the, at the UN conference, the UN sum, summit in Paris, mm -hmm. um, there was an agreement, a global agreement, to try to reduce um, the carbon, uh, the temperature of the earth by two degrees, mm -hmm. less than two degrees, that we have to do mm -hmm. that by reducing the carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. But I think that's not enough. I think it should have been to less than, we should be getting to less than one degree. Mm -hmm. People might think one degree, the reason the temperature of the earth by one degree, does it really matter? Mm -hmm. Especially when we come from Scotland where it's cold climate and think mm -hmm. one degree is two degrees. This, that mm -hmm. would be great. We'd be having a more Mediterranean type of lifestyle if we had you know, a better weather. Mm -hmm. However, you've got to think about the effects globally what happens. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of countries ta um, tackle climate change, but they do it in their own bubble, mm -hmm. their own silos, and their own countries, and they mm -hmm. think what we do here is enough, but it's not enough, because what happens in Lebanon, what, you know, whatever you, the carbon emissions you produce in Lebanon doesn't just have an effect in Lebanon. It'll have an effect somewhere else. It could have mm -hmm. an effect in Nepal, it could have an effect in Texas, it could have an effect in Iceland. So we are all responsible for whatever is taking place around us. Yes. yes. Uh, Zarina, allow us to stop now for a short break and then afterwards we will continue to talk further about the repercussions of this change in the climate. Okay. Okay. زارين أحمد مرشدة التغيير المناخي والبيئي في مجلس الأقليات الأثنية ومنظمات القطاع التطوعي تشرح بالتفصيل تأثير الدفيئة وما هي الغازات الأخرى غير ثاني أكسيد الكربون وهل وفقا للبيانات ثاني أكسيد الكربون في تزايد أكبر من الغازات الأخرى All the greenhouse gases are increasing, so there's, there's methane, mm -hmm. which again, as we explained earlier, is produced from food waste and from animals, mm -hmm. um, and that is increasing tremendously as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the smaller gases, like nit the nitrous gases, um, again, but they're a smaller amount, but they are all increasing. Um, the sci the, the science to prove that that this is happening. And um, before, people used to doubt, doubt it, and there was always this. Um, information that this is just nature's way of just balance, balancing itself out, that the tsunamis that have happened, the earthquakes, the floodings, that mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just the way of nature. Mm -hmm. But it's not. The scientific data now that shows that if you look at the data and you see the increase in carbon dioxide and the correlation to temperature changes, has, is vastly there. Mm -hmm. The problem with water vapor and water is that is the ice caps are melting. So that's and when the ice caps melt, the sea level rises. And as the sea level rises, a lot of lands are then becoming flooded Drown. or flooded and or drowning. So mm -hmm. there's certain areas now that are actually totally disappearing, mm -hmm. right? And also when the sea level rises then you get more rain and it's not just the amount of rain, it's also 
the extent of that rainfall is it's extreme downfalls that we're having, we're seeing. So mm -hmm. we're seeing more hurricanes, we're seeing more flooding, we're seeing more flash floodings mm -hmm. around the world. And mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing more of that happening. And so not only scorching temperatures, but also you, you tend to have hurricanes, you tend to have like cold weather and snow. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, that's, that's, so the weather changes are or what we see as a result of climate change. It becomes the opposite of what we are used to, perhaps, or what is known about this specific area. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and it has that knock-on effect, to, um, especially to farmers. Mm -hmm. So it's our food production. Where does our food production come from? It comes from farming land and agriculture. Mm -hmm. So it's having an effect on that. So if the farmers aren't able to grow in the seasons that they used to, because mm -hmm. you have you used to have seasons, you might have like a, a dry season, then you have a rain season, and if these are, are becoming mixed or, or unpredictable, mm -hmm. then the farming the farmers don't know how to grow things, and their plants aren't growing in the same way. They're not producing the same crop yield, and if they're not producing the same crop yield, the prices go up. Mm -hmm. So the pricing goes up. And again, then that has a knock-on effect on the market when it comes to our market. Mm -hmm. So it affects everybody. Right. Now, um, what is the source of the major beliefs that global warming will occur and will have severe and undesirable effects? What are some of the impacts and the consequences we expect directly from climate change? What we it is is back to temp is back to weather. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so the weather changes are some of the, the major climate impacts, mm -hmm. visible climate impact things yes, that we will see. Yes, this is the tangible one. That, They're the tangible. You know, yeah. Right, so you will see, for instance, in Lebanon, mm -hmm. you will probably see that the temperatures are increasing all the time, from year on year. And True. in the north, you will probably see more snowfall in the north than was expected before. I believe that last January, in March, February, mm -hmm. you had a lot of snow in, in the north of True. Lebanon. True. Right. So those are the things that would be seen. But it's the effect that those, those weather changes have. Mm -hmm. So if there's a, let's say in the north, there's a lot of snow in the north, then how do people get to work? Mm -hmm. How does it have to have an effect on the agriculture? Because we are not, you know, well equipped for exactly. It. Yeah, you're not equipped for it. And um, for instance, in Scotland, um, the temperatures are, are becoming warmer. True. Right. And Ireland also at the same time. Yeah. Yes. And so, and f so, we don't have air conditioning in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Right. So the mm -hmm. homes aren't so have you're air not conditioning. Prepared for yes. Such kind transports of don't have air conditioning. Our hospitals don't have air conditioning. So if the weather's increase. We will have people suffering a mm. lot more from the heat and from heat exhaustion. People dying from the heat. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, yeah, so it'll be, it's, it's, we're not adapted. So countries aren't adapted to these extreme weather changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how will climate change affect, for instance, the oceans and the organisms living in the oceans? Because the UN IPCC or Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report uh, states that up to 30% of animal and plant species will be threatened with extinction in the next few decades from global warming. Is this realistic? Is there it, it is totally realistic. Oh. Right. We are, it, it's not something that's going to happen in the future. It's happening now. In the near future, perhaps. Not even in the near future. It's happening right now. now. Right now. Um, a lot of species are dying out mm -hmm. um, because they're not used to the weather temperatures of the sea. Mm -hmm. The sea level, it, not only is the sea level rising, but the temperatures of the sea is increasing in certain areas. And it's also decreasing in certain areas because if you've got the ice caps melting, so that's introducing more cold water as well. And also you've got the fresh water and the sea water mm -hmm. um, is changing as well. So where there's areas of fresh water, you're getting more ingress from sea water. And again, so if you've got, uh, if you've got plantation or habitation that mm -hmm. only exists in, sea, in fresh sea water, but you're getting salt water coming into that, Mm -hmm. it's going to have an effect, it's going to kill species, and it's happening already. Now, uh, the global warming, does it affect all the countries equally, or there is one country more affected by global warming? Global warming affects... And if so, where? Global warming affects the whole, whole Earth. So yes. global warming is the core temperature of the Earth. Mm -hmm. that's happening and there are places that are more vulnerable I wouldn't say it affects them more but they're just more vulnerable to global warming for instance Bangladesh right Bangladesh sits on a floodplain and it's a low level 
and it's at sea level. And now, the problem with vulnerable countries are is their ability to then become sustainable after and become mm -hmm. resilient after and to be able to adapt after the impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's okay in the Western world where we have the resources to, if something did happen, we're able to come back from that. For instance, um, in America, if New York was hit by a bad storm, it wouldn't be the same as a place in Bangladesh being hit True. by a spa bad True. storm. True. Um, we have insurance in mm -hmm. the West. Mm -hmm. They don't have insurance in places like Bangladesh. If their mm -hmm. houses are gone, their houses are gone. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they're homeless. It will be disastrous. Yes, it's True. disastrous. True. Now, we will talk about this in the sense of, uh, you know, the uh, summit, the climate summit that took place uh, mm -hmm. back in December 2015, where 120 nations, one of the major issues apart from the emission reductions is finance how would the big countries you know and the the biggest countries who are responsible for those emissions aid and help those smaller countries you know in trying to make uh, friendly environmental ways of using energy now there's um this, the sustainable development goals are in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not something that um, each country is obliged to follow, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. But the sustainable goals have been put into place to ensure that if there's any investment by any country, um, that they have to ensure that there are certain areas that have been looked at and considered mm -hmm. when this investment is put into place. Zarina, who are the countries that are the most responsible for global warming? Can we name some countries? Yes, we can. Some of the countries are places like America, mm -hmm. China, and uh, the United Arab Emirates mm -hmm. are one of the countries that are we've got the highest carbon emissions um, per population. But funny that the uh, the United States of America they did not ratify the Kyoto Protocol back in 1997. So they don't want to help even their own people, you know, in this issue. They still don't think it's an issue. Some people in in America still mm -hmm. don't actually believe that climate change is an mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. even though Al Gore has been working on this for many years, and he's an American, and um, he's wrote. He's written a lot of the, um, work on it, he's done a lot of data, he's got a lot of data available, mm -hmm. did research with NASA on the issue, has brought it out to a global level, um, but America still, um, still want, don't want to take responsibility, I would say. It's not mm -hmm. that they don't want to understand it's there, I think they just don't want to take responsibility. Now, one last question, if mm -hmm. I may. What does the ozone hole have to do with climate change? quickly if I may ask. Right, the ozone layer is not directly related to climate change. Mm -hmm. The ozone layer is, pro is, is a very thin layer around the earth, mm -hmm. right? But there's pollution that goes up into the atmosphere and the pollution is causing holes in the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. So if there's- And the consequences of which is? The consequences of with that is that the sun's rays penetrate into the earth and can be damaging to mm -hmm. the sun's rays that weren't able to come into like the ultraviolet rays mm -hmm. that w that the ozone only protected us from mm -hmm. are now hitting the earth so again what it does is exasperates global warming mm -hmm. one last word Zarina mm -hmm. I think we all have responsibility we, we're all consumers mm -hmm. and I think we've got to look at where what we use where it comes from and do we really need it and mm -hmm. greed is another problem that we all have as human beings. Right, uh, Zarina Ahmed, Climate Change and Environment Officer with the Council of Ethnic Minority Voluntary Sector Organizations. Many thanks again for joining us, ma'am. Thank you. You're most welcome, ma'am. So, a new in the next week with a new and a new topic. And always from the inside. Let us know the insight at insight at almaydin.net and our page on Facebook from the inside, from all the inside, from all the inside. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.